when he tells you it's a toy gun, you believe him, correct? Well, why did he tell me that? I don't remember Yeah, it. quite. You've had one hell of a shock. Just give yourself the chance to reconstruct it all so that it all makes sense. A man who thinks he's carrying an imitation firearm is unlikely to have the necessary intent for murder, do you see? Now, if your own brother tells you it's a toy gun, you're going to believe him, aren't you? Of course you are. And no doubt that's why you didn't arrest him. So, what do you do? The sensible thing, you just take it off him, no fuss, and put it in your pocket. You know what? I'd have done exactly the same thing myself. You've interviewed enough people, you know the form, just take your time, tell the truth, you'll be all right. I'll be in there with you. Yeah, look, just get me out of here, will you? I was in Peru once, traversing the Andes, seeking the real me in a foreign land. Instead of me, I found an Indian who claimed to be on his fourth life and able to remember every detail of his past three lives. Isn't that amazing? He put it all down to this. An elixir that's been in his tribe for centuries that fixes the memory so that in the next life, one is already prepared to achieve new heights. Vince, you don't think I'm lacking confidence, do you? Not at all, sir. Don't I say to you, every year, it's just a question of winning a few cases. Or even one case. <laughs> I say to you, every year, without fail, every year, you just need to win a few cases. Or one case. <laughs> yes, Is it just me, Vince, or have you noticed anything strange about Edward Madden? Yeah, now you mention it, I did have a call from a solicitor this morning who briefed him. Apparently he told some client who was happily paying privately he was entitled to legal aid. Halved his fees. Oh, but that's written in the Code of Conduct. I know. But he acted on it. Now, that's <laughs> taking it too far. Nothing but that. Well, why are you watching them then, Dad? I pay for the bloody set. I watch what I bloody like. Yeah, but you're watching what you don't like. Look, I'm also watching you smartly ask for that bloody hot water you're using there. Oh, come on, George. It's Saturday. Only time he gets a proper wash. Well, I've got to smell sweet when the girls chase me, Mum. <laughs> I look a little lovelier each day. With fabulous pink camay. Oh, God. Well, life boy, actually, but same result. Bloody ballroom for you again, I suppose. He likes a ballroom. I remember the ballroom when it was a bloody ballroom. Proper dancing, decent tunes. Tootie fruity, all rooty, wop ba ba loo ba ba la bam boom. What's the matter with that? <laughs> Enough bloody said. Very kind of you to invite me, miss. Well, what about a drink? What can I get you, Vince? Pint of lager? Uh, I don't know, miss. I'll probably end up having a steak, so I think I prefer a burgundy. What about a Gevry Chambertin? I'm not too crucial about it, but I generally prefer the Clos Prieur at the Chanchin. <laughs> what wine it is. Oh, it's nice, isn't it? Just getting out of chambers and out of work mode. It's very relaxing. You're an Arsenal supporter, aren't you? Chelsea, season ticket holder. All right. Up the Reds. <laughs> so, uh, what exactly are we looking for? That's all there is. In 1899, a serial killer struck across London. He killed six people, all pillars of society. He was as bad as Jack the Ripper, e except for some reason the case never got the same notoriety. There's this bloke, McCrea. Yeah. McCrea. Yeah, he, he gets a mention in connection with it. There's no other reference to it. It's just a cut and paste job. It refers back to a much older case before our time. The records don't go back that far. What about the British Library records? Oh. What do you want, blood? Yes? Just a convenient moment, sir. Yes, Vincent, come in. Morning. Hello, John. I just want to have a word with you about this time sheet. I couldn't help noticing, sir, you put down two hours for this ten-page advice. That's right. Uh, could I ask how long it actually took you? Two hours? Oh, right. I thought there'd been a mistake. <laughs> uh, no problem, uh, Edward. Uh, Vincent will calculate the appropriate number of uh, chargeable hours. Yes, sir, no problem. I'll put down six and a half hours. <laughs> but two hours is the proper amount? Uh, in real time, yes, but course, chargeable time is different. I mean, I'm only 59 years old in real time, but if you add up all my chargeable hours, I'm currently 234. <laughs> I only did two hours' work. You've lost me. Hey, let me explain. <laughs> let me explain, Edward. You could, could you not conceivably have done two hours, two minutes? I suppose so. You see, we, we're charging units of an hour, so if we go over the hour, that's another unit, so that's three hours. And you probably interrupted a couple of times the phone, perhaps. 
I might have been. Oh, well, there you are. See, that's the shortfall. You see, you start a new unit after each interruption, build in a notional <laughs> three interruptions, and that's six. And if it's an even number, we round up to the nearest half hour for VAT. So, six and a half. VAT? Vince's additional time. <laughs> that's the time it takes me to add up the time. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.